Welcome to the Expert Series, brought to you by the Lupus Foundation of America. Our speaker today is Dr. Richard Fury, Chief of the Division of Rheumatology at Northwell Health New York, Professor of Medicine at the Hofstra Northwell School of Medicine, as well as the Clinical Trials Expert and Rheumatologist. His work focuses on patient care, physician education, and clinical research in the area of anti-rheumatic drug development. Today, we will be talking about clinical trials in lupus. So to begin, Dr. Fury, what are lupus clinical trials and why are they important? Clinical trial is a type of research. And before I answer specifically what a lupus clinical trial is, let me just talk about research in general. There are different types of research. There's basic science research. And when we think of that, we think of people pouring over test tubes in the lab. And that's very important to decipher the components of the immune system and what's important in lupus and basically serves as a foundation for some of the products, some of the uh, agents that we're studying in lupus clinical trials. So at the other end of the spectrum is clinical research, and that's research that's often carried out on patients trying to delve into uh, patient care, how to improve outcomes. Now, a clinical trial specifically deals with a drug in development. And it's the only way we can get drugs approved for lupus as well as other diseases. And I must say, right now, there are major unmet needs for drugs for lupus. So the mechanism by which a drug gets approved by the FDA or other regulatory authorities around the world is to start out with a small study in patients to study the safety and how the drug is metabolized. And if that's successful, then we advance to the next phase, which would be phase two, where a larger number of patients are studied. And those numbers could be around 100 to 300 patients. And if that's effective, then we move on to phase three, which entails doing two large studies, often as large as uh, six, 700 patients for each of the two studies. And two studies are required for FDA approval. So it's a long haul. It's generally around 10 or 11 years from beginning until end. But it's a necessary set of steps in order to get drugs approved for lupus. Mm -hmm. So now that we can differentiate between the different types of research, let's move on to participation. What should a person with lupus consider before agreeing to participate in a clinical trial? Well, they need to understand what the trial is all about. And as I mentioned, there are different types of clinical research. So one type could be very benign, and that is just filling out surveys. But at the other end of the spectrum might be a drug trial, so a lupus clinical trial. And it's so important to speak to the investigator and know exactly what is being performed, why it's being performed, and the actual procedure is for the investigator to sit down with the subject, with the study subject, the patient, and go through an informed consent. And informed consents are generally around 10 to 12 pages long, and it can get a little tedious going through those. So it's also very important for the investigator to just explain exactly what's in the informed consent rather than just say, read it. So it's so important that the subject understand what he or she is getting into. Mm -hmm. So what about standard of care? Let's say that someone learns as much as they can about the study that they're interested in and decides that they want to participate. Does that mean that they have to stop the treatment that they're currently on? Well, every trial is designed a little bit differently. And it's hard to make a general statement short of the fact that for most of the studies, like a phase two or a phase three study, so the studies that are uh, where the drug is somewhat advanced in development, usually the design is such that the patient remains on their standard of care background therapy, and the study drug is added to that. Now, you also have to know whether there's placebo involved. Most of the studies are placebo controlled. And what that means is that a certain percentage of the group gets the experimental drug, 
and then uh, those who don't get the experimental drug get placebo and placebo is an inactive substance and it's necessary to do placebo controlled studies to really understand the good and the bad of these experimental therapies but in general patients stay on their background therapy in fact there it gets even a little more complicated because sometimes there are rules about whether the background therapies can be tapered or discontinued specifically with steroids so again it's a detail that you need to find out from the investigator for the study mm -hmm. and what about ending participation in a clinical trial is someone who is already involved in one able to leave it once they've started it so the patient comes first and the patient's health comes first there are sometimes unknowns about clinical trials about the potential side effects of the experimental medicine and it's also possible that the patient's underlying disease could worsen so at each visit, it's so key for the investigator, the physician, to assess how the patient's doing. And if the patient is having health issues, then it's, it's key to provide regular care to the patient, even if it means taking them out of the study. Now, uh, the patient may also be able to, or may want to, drop out of the study for whatever reason and they are allowed to do that so no one's going to make a patient stay in the study they have the right to withdraw at any time we hope that doesn't happen because the longer they stay in the study and hopefully till the end of the study the more we can learn about the experimental therapy but the patient comes first absolutely mm -hmm. and are there costs associated with participating in a clinical trial for most clinical trials, there's absolutely no cost. In fact, generally, there's a bit of money in the budget to reimburse the patient for travel. And then if they need to stay for a good part of the day, I know at our site, we often provide them with food, with breakfast or lunch. So there shouldn't be any cost. But again, that's something that needs to be worked out with the investigator when the patient is reading the informed consent at the very beginning before they sign on to the study. Mm -hmm. Just to wrap up, where can someone find more information about lupus clinical trials? Well, there are a couple of resources. So the Lupus Foundation of America has a very nice website and they have the National Resource Center on Lupus. And you just plug in clinical trials into the search and it will give you all kinds of information. Alternatively, you can go on the government website. There's uh, clintrials.gov. So certainly if you're adept at uh, computer searches, you can easily find the various clinical trials that are taking place. And I just wanna emphasize it's so important for the lupus community to get involved. Now I realize that trials, certainly interventional trials with experimental drugs may not be for everybody, but the lupus community needs to support the lupus community because we have a lot of unmet needs and we need better outcomes. That's what this is all about, to provide patients with a better outlook for the future. Dr. Fury, thank you so much for sharing such valuable information about clinical trials in lupus. I think that it will especially be helpful for those who are interested in participating in lupus clinical research. That said, the Lupus Foundation of America is dedicated to connecting people with lupus to research. So we have partnered with Antidote, a digital health startup that has developed an easy to use online search tool. Find the search tool on our National Resource Center on Lupus at resources.lupus.org backslash search clinical trials. As September is National Hispanic Heritage Month, next month's segment will be in Spanish. Entitled Lupus 101, this segment will provide guidance and tips for those who have been newly diagnosed with lupus. If you would like to connect with others who are impacted by lupus, check out our online community, Lupus Connect, where you can talk with others, find emotional support, and discuss practical insights for coping with the daily challenges of lupus. Or if you'd like to learn more about living well with lupus, you can find additional resources on the National Resource Center on Lupus, or you can call one of our health educators at 
Thank you and have a wonderful day.